Hey, what's up, DIYers? Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. Hey, we're talking boats today. We've got a 3.0 Mercruiser inboard engine. And in today's video, the proper and safe way on how to replace not only your spark plugs, but the wires. Our right, DIYers at the workstation now. And on the other side of the jet ski is the workbench. We'll get there here shortly. And a special thanks to my mom and dad for allowing me to bring in their jet ski for the winter for DIY repair videos for all of you, the DIY community. Let's hop to the workbench. Making our way around the jet ski, and hey, if you're into skateboarding, definitely check out the links down below in the comments section as well as the description section. We'll show you how to build your own custom logo board and mount it on the wall. And down below where our outdrive used to be, filling the slot is our 1996 Dino Air. We're gonna clean it up, strip the decals, have a company re-chrome the entire frame, fork, and handlebars, and we're gonna rebuild that thing. We have also cleaned up our 96 Dino VFR. We'll post links down below. Definitely check those out. And the famous GT mag wheels with the gum wall tires. However, to the workbench. Here is our OEM Quicksilver ignition wire set and part number right there. I'll have that down below as well. And our exact serial number service manual calls for AC Delco MR43T plugs. Gapped to 0.035. We are not going to bore you with that in this video. In the event that you want step-by-step -step guidance on how to properly gap a spark plug, definitely check out the link scrolling above. However, again, in our case, 0.035 is the gap. We are going to gap all of those. And in addition, this is the tune-up kit and all the internal parts of our distributor cap. And we will have a step-by-step -step video link down below in the comment section as well as the description section for that. A lot of helpful videos for all of you. Let's go outside to the boat. All right, DIYers, to the boat. And in the event that you have been with us as we work through all of our DIY repair videos, we really appreciate that. Let's hop to the back of the boat where our just recently installed rebuilt outdrive is. And again, all rebuilt, top to bottom, brand new bellows. And in addition, brand new trim sender and trim limit switches, as well as brand new anodes on all sections of the boat. Look at that. As well as the one right there. In addition, we are going to post links down below on how to replace your anode set, as well as replace your hydraulic lines that feed hydraulic fluid to your trim rams. And we are also going to replace our trim rams, both starboard and port side. And DIYers, definitely check out the links down below in the comment section as well as the description section. A lot of helpful videos. Take a step back and we are going to hop inside the boat. The very first thing we are going to do is disconnect the black negative cable from our battery. As you can see, we have already did that. And for safety purposes, cut all electrical power to your system prior to working on anything electrical, such as your spark plugs and wire set. Inside the boat now, and this is our 3.0 liter inboard engine. And we do our best to keep it clean. Cleaner you keep your equipment, well, they say the longer it will last, right? And you can see feeding off of our distributor cap here are all of our spark plug wires, and they feed to all of the respective plugs as well as the top portion of our ignition coil. And right there, is a 12 volt ignition coil and we are also going to replace that as well as our distributor cap and all the inner mechanics that we just showed you inside on the workbench. However again what we'll do is replace all of our spark plugs and wires. I'm going to position the camera as we work through this project. At this point I've got the camera set back and again here is the top portion of our distributor cap where all of the opposite end of the spark plug wires and boots secure into. In DIYers I highly recommend going slow, be precise, stay organized as you work through this project because in the event during the project you install a connection on the wrong point of the distributor cap you are going to unfortunately alter the sequence of your spark plug firing and what is that going to do? Well I'm going to tell you that will actually make your engine run worse than it did before and that's not what you want, right? So again, stay organized, work through this project carefully and precisely in an organized manner. And with that said, we are going to start with the spark plug closest to the front portion of the engine. And I'm going to carefully grab the boot and pull it off. And I'm going to set that down. And in our case, again, we've got four plugs and they are 5 8 size. I'll grab my 5 8 ratchet and socket. I've got an extender on there as shown here. Again, 
5 8 as you see. And I'm going to position it in a way where I can remove the plugs. And surprisingly, that one was extremely loose. And that plug is pretty dirty, right? And what I'll do is I'll set the old plugs in the boxes that the new one came out of. And what I'll do next is just kind of carefully clean the little insert here that the plug secures into. And I will install the brand new plug. Extremely important DIYers, do not cross thread your plugs into the threaded insert in the engine block. That would become a nightmare. The plug itself should screw in extremely easily and efficiently. If it's not, go ahead and stop turning it clockwise, change to turning it counterclockwise, reset the thread, and begin screwing it back in. And do not over tighten these plugs into the block. You want them snug, but not over tighten them. From here, I am going to not actually push the boot onto the plug, I'm just going to rest it on it to again stay organized. And from here, I'll go to the next one, pull this off. And shift that down and out of the way, followed by removing this plug. And that one's more tight than the first one, which is nice. Followed by installing the brand new plug. Again, do not cross thread these inside the engine block. That would become a nightmare. Same thing, I'll grab the old plug boot not actually push it on, but I just want to rest it on the plug itself to again, stay organized. And on to the next one. Not too bad, a little bit of corrosion. This one's a little tricky. Just be very careful and go slow to again, ensure you're not cross threading the plug inside the engine. Really get a good feel for it as you screw this in hand tight only. Plug is tight and again, resting the boot on the plug and we'll go to the final one. Overall, the plugs are not in that bad a condition. But if you're wondering if I'm excited to replace them, I am. At this point, DIYers, all of the plugs are replaced. It is now time to replace all of the wires feeding into the distributor cap and the plugs themselves. And I'm going to go in the same order. I'm going to remove this one carefully, pull up, and remove the actual plug wire as shown here. And you now have access to the internal lead of the distributor cap. Next, you want to take your old wire and line it up to the new set and verify you are installing the exact same size. In our case, this one right here. And a cool feature on these new plugs is they actually have pre-installed or applied dielectric grease. And check that out, even inside here. Check that out. And all I'll do is take my thumb and 
move it around on the inner portion of the boot just to lubricate, again, the entire inner portion of that boot. And I'll do this for every single one of the new wires and plugs. All right, DIYers, hey, a quick break in the action, and I apologize about the blur. Unfortunately, when I zoomed into the inner portion of that spark plug boot to show you that pre-applied dielectric grease and how I used my thumb to spread it out equally on the inside of that boot to, again, properly lubricate it. Unfortunately, my camera zoomed right into the inner portion of that boot, and unfortunately, as I continued to move forward with the project, I didn't resume it. So I apologize about that. And from here, carefully insert and push down, being very careful that you do not damage the wire and you will hear it click. In fact, you can actually bring the cover boot up and push this in until it makes the clicking sound and is secured. As shown there, push the boot down and I'll take the opposite end and install it to the spark plug. Align it properly, push it in until it clicks and is secured in place. Followed by the next one. Same thing, dielectric grease inside there. Just stick my finger or thumb and move it around the inner portion of the boot to properly lubricate the entire inside. And I'll leave that one alone. Secure it onto the distributor cap. Press it down and verify it is secured. Followed by installing the boot on the plug. As shown there. And the remaining two wires have this little clip here. I don't want to lose that. I want to keep that. Check that out. I'll set that aside and I'm going to remove this portion here as well as the boot. Same thing, lubricate the inner portion of that boot prior to installing it onto the ignition coil. And again, get a good grip of the wire itself as you push this down inside the distributor cap, followed by pushing the boot all the way down and coming in and around and pressing it onto the respective spark plug. And the last one. I'm actually going to take a good look at how this is routed. And I'm going to route the brand new wire the same way. Same thing, lubricate the boot. Followed by pressing it into the top portion of the distributor cap until it is down and clipped and locked in place. Drop the boot. And feed the wire accordingly to the spark plug. And last but not least, the center one that feeds off the top portion of the distributor cap all the way up to your ignition coil. And this one's different. These are the connections on that one. And same thing, lubricate the inner portions of the boot with that dielectric grease that has already been applied, which is awesome. And same thing. There we go. Next, you want to grab this clip right here, and we are going to resecure these two wires together, as shown there. And DIYs, that is it. Again, that is how you properly and safely replace your spark plugs and wires. And from here, I just recommend double checking everything. Make sure everything is tight. Again, all of your plugs, your plug connections, and the connections that feed into the distributor cap, and on top of the ignition coil, as well as double checking you're not leaving any tools inside the engine compartment area. And if all looks good, you can resecure the black negative cable to your battery and restore electrical power to your boat and get your boat back out on the water so you can have fun. In addition, DIYers, if you are still watching, we are going to replace this distributor cap as well as all the inner workings and mechanics, which again is all of those parts right there. There's the tune-up kit part number, OEM, followed by replacing our 12-volt ignition coil and by replacing all of our plugs, all of our spark plug wires, as well as our distributor cap and all of the inner workings. And on top of that, our 12-volt ignition coil, we are going to enhance the performance, efficiency, and the reliability of our ignition system and the spark system. Again, with all of our plugs, the wires, the cap, and the coil. And for your convenience, down below in the comment section, as well as the description section, will be links on how to replace both your distributor cap and the inner working and your 12 volt ignition coil. And again, that's it. If all looks good, go have fun out on the water.
from here, do us a favor, blow the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. Now to a close up and a recommendation I have, go ahead and position your spark plug boots on the plugs themselves where the actual wire is not resting up and flush and touching the hot portions of the engine. That will extend the life of your ignition system. Again, all of those wires are positioned in a way where they are not touching the engine, as you see there.